Hello and welcome to Ginger Prime. My name is Brian if you're new around here, but if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And might I say that you look smashing today. Thanks for being here, you amazing individual. That's what you get for subscribing, by the way. Free compliments and flattery at the start of videos, but only for subscribers. But beyond that, today's video is about helping to remove the healing anxiety and giving you the tools that you need to succeed when playing this role in Final Fantasy XIV. I feel this is more important than ever with Final Fantasy XIV's next expansion, Endwalker. Everyone is going to unlock the new healer job, Sage, which starts at level 70. So if you're watching this video and Endwalker has already been released, be sure to check the top link in the description for my Final Fantasy playlist, and that way you're gonna make sure that you're watching the most up-to-date information possible. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, let me know if this is the video that earns your subscription so I can officially welcome you to the channel. And so with that out of the way, let's get started healing and help you break down some of the anxiety when it comes to playing this role. As I like to do with my guides, this video is going to be broken up into different chapters. You can check the play ahead to easily jump to the section that best suits you and suits your interests the most. But without further ado, let's jump into dealing with others, chapter one. Now, it's very natural to feel anxiety when it comes to playing a healer in Final Fantasy XIV, because if you do not mess up at all, there are still players out there who are going to blame you or blame the healer when things go wrong. And there's nothing that this video can do to help cure humanity of that problem. So my first tip is don't worry about people getting mad at you. It's going to happen. And no matter how many times you rescue somebody out of danger, you know how many times that you resurrect them after they've fallen off the arena, there's going to always be some others who value their own opinion and their time higher than that of the group. But here is what we can do to help everyone have a fun time and help you on the healer role. So before we get into skills, let's dive into the key success methods of what makes a really good healer, especially when you're starting out. So the simplest thing to do, it's pretty basic and easy, it's set the expectation. If you're brand new, you're just learning your first dungeon on your new role, or you're just starting this piece of content and this is the first time that you've healed it, a simple message that says, hello, first time healing on this dungeon, I'm going to do my best will ultimately communicate so much more to your team and it really helps set the expectation so they know that you're new and they won't expect somebody who's both familiar with the content and the role. So your next critical path for any healer is to fully understand what your skills and spells do for the party. You might think that, for example, Cure 3 is better than Cure 2, but if you actually take a look and look at the tooltip, you'll find that these actually have two functionally different potencies. So Cure 2 here being a Cure Potency of 700, Cure 3 being a Cure Potency of 550, being that this is an, kind of a ranged AoE heal spell. So all in all, you'll find that as you level up, and especially we'll talk about damage and more of that here in just a little bit, most likely you're going to be spending most of your time with your off the global cooldown healing abilities as opposed to any hard casting healing spell. But I'll go into more detail about that here in a little bit. But just pay attention, get familiar with your tooltips, spend, you know, like 30 minutes kind of just reading over them. And if they don't specifically make sense to you, if you're confused about when you should be using these abilities, you can always consult a focus guide that's going to take you through my white mage, my scholar, my astrologian, or any content creators here on YouTube. Desperous Final Fantasy 14 is an excellent example of another content creator who really breaks down these jobs well. I'll include a link, uh, a tag to his content in the description of this video. Now, finally, outside of healing specifically, kind of tip number three, as you start to master the role, you're going to find that most of your time actually isn't spent healing. And this is really in that downtime where you could turn your healer into something who can actually output some damage for your team. And while Yoshi P does state that the content is balanced around not needing a healer to output damage, you're going to find yourself pretty bored. So we're going to talk about how you go from pure healer to a hybrid healer, damage dealer, here in a little bit as well so you know just note that that's coming up let's go into chapter two guys this is going to be focusing in on core aspects of each healer this is going to be something that's true across the board whether you play white mage scholar or astrologian and speaking of which there is no right answer as to which one you should play now i would say if you're starting out pick conjurer 
start as and go that which goes and evolves into white mage i think that's the most logical path however scholar is an excellent choice astrologian is an excellent choice the healer that you find the most fun to play is going to be the healer that you spend the time to learn and to master so just feel free to kind of try them all out uh maybe get them all kind of around that level 30 level 40 range uh, ultimately level 50 is going to where you start to see some more of their identities come across so feel free to kind of play around with those and uh, see what ultimately takes you all the way to camp as a healer first and foremost you need to learn your like re regeneration skills every healer has lucid dreaming you can kind of go into your actions and traits and you can go into your role and you can see what every healer has specifically swift cast insta cast your next spell this is perfect to pair with your raise ability so you can get those easy insta raises going off but you can see here you're going to only get one a minute and we could tell you how to speed that up here in just a little bit now in suna this is going to remove a, a dot from a target party member now how do you know what dots can be removed when you look at the dots that are applied dots with a blue bar over them like negative you know debuffs that are applied to your party members will have that blue bar you can remove those with insuna so pay attention to that if they do not have a blue bar above them and Suna will not remove them. So that's going to save you some time and effort. Repose is going to put these uh, enemies to sleep. Ultimately, I never really see this used much, but you have it, especially for playing solo. It's a huge help. Like I said, knowing your mana regeneration, lucid dreaming every 60 seconds is going to help increase your mana regen, which is going to keep making sure that you're able to actually cast both offensive and healing abilities. Sure cast. This is going to be an nullify any kind of knockback or draw in effect perfect for certain content especially as you get into the harder tier content but ultimately you want to make sure you have sure cast on your bar and you know where it's at it's going to save your life and it's going to save the whole party from time to time it doesn't affect the whole party i'm just saying if you're alive you can rest people and you can go on and then finally rescue this is going to allow you to pull a target member right to you people can use this to troll but you can only do it every two minutes this is a great way if somebody is kind of caught up and not able to make it back to you in time you can get them to you and rescue them now i said uh we talked about lucid dreaming but also if you take a look at a size a size is going to restore your own hp and mp of nearby party members and it's going to restore five percent of your maximum mp to you as well so if you look at with especially with white mage you have thin air this is going to make mp cost of all actions reduced to zero so you can cast without having to worry about this for 12 seconds which is great to pair with like rays you get somebody going down all the time on white mage that's going to be a huge help lucid dreaming and a size those are going to be uh some great abilities that you're going to have to be able to restore mp outside of any kind of like mana regeneration potion let's go ahead and switch over to scholar real quick uh scholar again like just they have the lucid dreaming but if you also take a look at energy drain this is going to give you a portion of your damage dealt both as hp and M mp back to you as a player so this is another way you can regenerate some of your mana and same thing with aether flow it's going to restore 10 percent of your maximum mp so with these abilities together you're now going to be recovering that mp so you're going to always find yourself or hopefully you always find yourself with plenty of a pool to be able to continue to output damage and healing now let's switch over to astrologian again you can see here as a part of the fact that i play all the healers i try to put certain skills in the same spot so it becomes more of a muscle memory aspect but you can see here lucid dreaming that's going to give me that ability to restore that mp if you look at draw draw is going to restore eight percent of my maximum mp it's going to encourage you to constantly be putting out those cards which is going to force you into your, your kind of job specific mechanic which is divination for the astrologian i didn't really cover job specifics here as astro <laughs> as scholar has your pet fairy which is going to constantly be putting out healing over time and then as you level it up you're going to have pet skills for your fairy as well which is going to play out real nice in the long run and then white mage has its essentially kind of its bar which will eventually allow you to uh, cast certain spells that are going to use certain lilies you can see i'm using a simplified bar but also you can uh, uh, focus in on the aphilis uh, misery here that once you get three stacks of your blood lily uh, you'll be able to put out even more damage as well so every healer has a specific thing that they're focusing in on to do so we talked about the swift cast and raise we talked about uh your debuffs and in Suna, we talked about mp regeneration skills we talked about rescuing if you can i want to focus now on a concept called slide casting slide casting is the ability to cast and as you get close to finishing your cast 
you can start to move. You'll know that if you don't slide cast correctly, you'll see that interrupted symbol come in. So as you get ready to finish your cast, you can easily switch over and get out of dodge. So pay attention to this because it will allow you to also finish your cast and move to the next. Same thing also works with curing. You can also slide cast on any kind of healing spell, allowing you to kind of get that last bit off so that way you can then get out of dodge, get out of bad. So pay attention to slide casting as it's an important aspect of the game. Uh, especially it will save your life. It will save your team a mate's life. And as you kind of touch on that, as you kind of work towards that, it's going to be a really good uh, thing to practice on. So until you get that comfort level with casting, what I would note is that if you like Astrologian, Astrologian has some of the fastest cast times when it comes to playing the job, especially from an attack perspective. So you'll have to kind of adjust to that if you're used to playing more of a white mage or a scholar in the game itself. All right, and finally, in terms of our core aspects for each healer, limit break three. As you play in the content, you'll see your limit break bar. When you do content that gives you three options for a limit break, that as a healer will be a mass resurrection for the entire party. This can save an entire run. Uh, limit break one and two for a healer will just be kind of a big AOE heal. Typically, you don't see those going off any, any stretch of the imagination for those. Typically, you want to save those for damaging or maybe even mitigating with the tank but i see a lot of people a lot of healers not know or have the limit break uh set to their bar itself so let's go ahead and actually show you where i've got mine set that way you can see how i have it function so here on my double cross hop bar you can see here i've got my limit break set that's the symbol you want it from your actions and trades menu going into general and then you'll see limit break here as an option this will allow you to use those abilities so be sure you have this set personally i like to set it on a shared bar this will be good to have it wherever you're supposed to use it no matter what and a place that's not accidentally triggered in case that way you you know you don't set it off and <laughs> ultimately set people like oh god why did the healer use the limit break we were about to finish and win the boss uh, lastly if you pull hate find your tank he's going to be able to aoe and pick them up and therefore you're going to be able to survive the run so just feel free to make sure you take use of this and these core aspects when it comes to healing and let's go ahead and dive into chapter three so welcome to chapter three understanding your healer as a damage dealer and before we really dive into the bulk of the healing skills and the three healers it's easier just to talk about the healer damage right here because of how simplified they've made it currently each healer has a damage over time smell otherwise known as a dot this is going to be the best way to start getting up and putting out some damage in party play. It's fast, it's instant, and you can cast it on the move. And this is going to allow you to put out damage even more over time. So just kind of be paying attention to your dots because of how instant they are. And you can always use those easily if you got to even move and no damage is being put out to your party. Each healer has also a single target spell. This is great for when you can stand still. And you're going to still want to work on that slide casting that I talked about in the previous chapter. Uh, you know when you can move so you can actually get the most out of your damage and so that way you can stand out of it, all the bad stuff on the ground. Each healer also has an AoE. This is great for big pulls, but you really need to know once you're ready for them and the different AoEs actually function slightly different per each job. Now, as you level up each of the healers, they're going to have their also their own special mechanic. We touched on this previously in the, in the in the first chapter but this will come into play more right here and right now now see here i'm on the astrologian or astrologian either way i pronounce it you never know uh and you can see here from a damage perspective i've got my damn wheel of damage that i also list here for the scholar and i also list here for the white mage with an exception because the white mage has an extra damaging ability that we'll talk about now here on astrologian combust will evolve over time into combust 3 level 80 a Malphic 4, and so you can easily just slot your Malphic, and that's going to upgrade automatically with your traits. You can see Gravity. So Combust is my dot. This is going to be my unexpected damage over time uh, with a 30-second uh, you know, duration for that dot. Malphic is going to be my, my potency of 250, and then again, it's got some fast quick time casts here as the <laughs> Astro. And then Gravity. It's actually a ranged AoE. You can see a potency of 140 to all target and, and enemies nearby. So that's going to be the focus here with the draw. I have that as my special mechanic, allowing me to easily slot in my spear or whatever card I draw that I can apply uh, to the target. Now you can see here, 
Uh, it's going to tell you what target that you want to focus in on to get the most of the damage increase as opposed to just kind of your default 3%. Uh, that's going to take some memorization. I highly encourage you to check out a focus guide on trying to help memorize where those cards need to go. Once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty simple and basic. Take a look at the colors. They're going to tell you where you need to kind of apply the card to for the best benefit overall. So that's the Astrologian in a nutshell. You also have Lord of Crowns. Uh, this is going to help increase the damage of the party member by self by 8% or a, tower, a DPS tank by 4%. Uh, so just pay attention because this is your damage and then you can increase the damage output of other players in your party. So uh, Astrologian brings utility in replace of pure out, you know, personal damage. We'll go ahead and switch over to the White Mage in this case. You can see here White Mage has Glare. This is their single target ability with a potency of 300. You have Dia. This has got a unexpected damage of a potency of 120. And at its ultimate form by Dia, it's going to last for 30 seconds. But as you level up as Conjurer, the, the, the cast time, the duration time, excuse me, is going to be much shorter. And so that's going to evolve with time. A size, this is that both HP and MP restoring, but it also is going to put out damage with a potency of 400 as an AoE. We have Aphilus Mesery. This is at potency of 900. That's huge damage. And so just note that it's going to be pretty epic. And it's also an AoE for the first enemy and it's going to have a 20 percent less uh damage fall off for additional enemies so note that you can really output some damage here the the the, the catch is it's going to be built off your lilies and to get your blood lilies you got to be using aphilus rapture or aphilus solace to be able to kind of fill that up uh, so note that it's not going to be always available to you now if i switch over to my holy here which is going to be on my page two which i use this to kind of fire it off you see holy as a aoe ability with the stun effect of 140 to all enemies so the white mage has a lot of damage output ability which is quite quite nice now as we dive into scholar as a kind of our third healer here you got biosis this is an evolution of bio this is a damage over time for 30 seconds then you have broil which is an evolution of ruin and this is going to be your single target hitting spell so it can hit pretty hard you have art of war this is going to have a potency of 160 and the nice thing about art of war is it's insta cast from you as a target so if you think of all the three healers, you think of gravity, that's going to be a ranged AOE. Holy is not insta-cast, so it has a charge-up time, so you have to still run up and, and put it in. Um, and then Art of War has the opposite effect, where yes, it's insta-cast, but you still obviously have to wait. And you can see here, it can actually drain your MP pretty quickly if you continue to cast it over and over again in combat. So that's where you might want to pair that with Lucid Dreaming, especially if you you uh don't find yourself uh in the the thick of things and then not being able to heal coming out of a damage uh push whether it's an aoe pool or a boss uh you know rotation since damage is self-simplified i hope that you may that makes sense if you have any questions about damaging as a healer please let me know we can always have the discussion in the comments of this video but chapter four is about understanding healing and each healer now as you start to master healing you're going to find that a lot of your healing can actually really be done using more off the global cooldown abilities rather than hard casting any cure spell. Uh, while your priority should be to keep the tank alive, keep you alive, and then keep the DPS alive, the more you play as a healer, the more experience that you get with your party, you're going to find that off the global cooldown abilities are going to be way more powerful as a tool and then you, you know, then used with timing the specific content. You're going to be focused more on damage and mechanics, and this really shouldn't stress you out right at the start, because at the start, you should just focus in on healing. And as you get comfortable, that's when you should start putting out those dots on the enemies. And then as you get comfortable and you realize everybody's perfectly topped off and everybody's having a good time, you can start really kind of pushing your damage and get a feel for that. But as the healer goes, you can take a look at every certain ability. Now, here I am on my Scholar. Scholar has Physic. This is going to be a Cure Potency of 400, but you also have Ad Loquium. This is a Cure Potency of 300, but this is going to be able to apply a shield to your target. This is going to allow you to kind of pre-game lots of things. Personally speaking, I like Exogitation, or Exo in this case, as it's a nice <laughs> Lustrate, which is an instant big heal that's going to require your Fairy Gauge. It's going to require your Aether Flow. You get three stacks here as a scholar but only in combat it's anyway my, my opinion aside i hope that we see a change of that in endwalker 
but it allows you to kind of pre-game. You can pre-heal as a scholar. You can shield as a scholar. And then you can kind of really kind of kick back and focus more on damage because your fairy is going to be outputting healing. Your fairy is acting like a massive hot, a healing over time. And they're going to go pick the, the player that they feel most deserves it. You can specifically control your fairy in certain situations. But note that for the most part, most content that you see running as a part of the kind of four man content, really the fairy does exactly what you need them to do. You should be very well aware of how you can control your fairy and how you can evolve them, especially at level 80 into Seraph, which is a really nice a way of getting both healing over time and shields as well, especially then taking advantage of the Seraph's unique and special abilities. That way they don't end up <laughs> living completely off of cooldown. So. As you can see here, your fairy is going to do a lot of the hard and lifting. And then with your Aether Flow, you can have the ability to bring in with Instacast a lot of healing back to the uh, your you know to the group whenever needed. So just again, spend time learning what emergency tactics does, learning what deployment tactics does, learning what recitation does. These are really powerful skills, and especially when you employ them at the right time for the right effect. Switching into Astrologian, Astrologian is heavily driven off of the card system. Again, like I say. They have bring a lot of utility to the raids, thus allowing you to help buff the damage output of your party member and then even ultimately with the whole team. And the Astrologian has a lot of different flexibility, Diurnal Sect, Nocturnal Sect, and Neutral Sect. This adding region to certain abilities, this adding shielding to certain abilities, and this adding both region and shielding and increasing man's potency by certain abilities. So you can see here Aspected Helios, and then aspect to benefit these are great ways to kind of apply that uh that healing over time if you're in one stance or shielding when one stance so astrologian kind of floats the gap between being a shield healer and a pure healer in n walker it's currently suspected that the astrologian is going to be more of a pure healer and sage and scholar are going to be more shield healers but we'll have to wait and see and we'll be sharing information here on this channel when that changes in the future so keep it locked here for that but overall, you can see here Benefic and Benefic 2. Benefic 2 can have a chance to restore critical HP if Benefic 1 is fired off. But note, when it comes down to the MP cost, you're really not making up for it in terms of timing. But the speed that Astrologian brings is very powerful. Essential Dignity is your Instacast with a massive potency, and you can have it have two charges as you get leveled up. But at the end of the day, as a healer, you're going to want to be relying on different hots or shields. And that's going to be kind of the big aspect here for the uh, for this, the Astrologian or the Astrologian. Now we get to White Mage. White Mage has a ton in its toolkit. Personally speaking, I'm a big fan of Presence of Mind. This is really great by helping you reduce your cast times and recast times and auto attack by 20%. This is going to give you the ability to fire off those resurrections if you don't have swift cast. This is going to help improve your overall speed. Now, Astrologian, as we kind of covered here a little bit, didn't you know has light speed. This is going to make everything instacast, and this is a, an incredible ability, especially when things are going wrong. That White Mage still at the same time has presence of mind. This overall is still a great ability. It's got a longer cooldown, and just take note of that, and you're going to have a good time with it. You still have plenty of opportunity to be able to put things down like uh you know aoe healing over time you can increase the overall uh, potencies uh, of your healing magic with various like <laughs> plenary indulgences uh Aphilus rapture is fantastic as a great aoe healing ability and you can also then still use medica medica 2 and cure 3 for aoe heals uh i rarely as a high level healer use cure 1 maybe use cure 2 most often than not, Tetragrammaton is going to be my go-to. Aphilus Solace is going to be my go-to. Benediction is going to be a go-to. And Divine Benson is going to be a go-to, as it's a nice way to put a little shield out on your target. And then you also have Temperance, which is just, it's just great. It, it, temperance is just a beautiful thing. It really makes you look fantastic. If I fire it off correctly, I can get these great healing wings. The important aspect, and while I'm not going into every detail about the healing in this game, the important idea is that you take the time and you kind of look and you read the tooltips to get a good gauge of the potency and what the effects of them do. These are critical when they come to maximizing both your healing as well as your damage because damage in a way is healing and not killing out and defeating all the AOE mobs. Everybody's going to be able to be fine and live. 
And guess what? That's less healing. That's a faster run. And you can ultimately have that where you push yourself. Now, I get that that might sound stressful. And you're like, Brian, I thought this was an anxiety reducing video. And it should be. Note that if you're having fun, you're doing it right. When it comes down to the job, let people know you're new. Like that's the best way to start. More often than not, when it comes to Final Fantasy 14, I see a lot of people not start something and then essentially build it up in their heads where it's bigger than they are. And so it feels like it's this big thing. When in reality, you can easily just go read some tool tips. You can team up with friends. If you're really nervous about playing with randoms, you can use your trusts if you've unlocked trusts in the Shadowbringers expansion and then bring it back to where you're just kind of getting that feel for what the skills themselves do. Letting people know you knew, setting the expectation, and then spending time with the job is going to remove that anxiety that you have. You could have the perfect play. You could do nothing wrong and still things don't always work out right. Still, you know, <laughs> DPS are gonna run off the edge. Tank's gonna miss the tank buster and they're gonna find themselves struggling to keep up. And you never really know how somebody's gonna react to, you, to their HP. One of the things that's interesting about random parties versus kind of pre-made parties is that if you're with a group and I know I, I play, when I play with a specific healer, I know that she's always got my back. I know that I can actually be in the 20% HP range and it's going to be just fine. However, in a random group at 20%, I might start panicking. I might use certain skills before I need to worry about them. There is a synergy that comes with like a dedicated party, a dedicated play group that really you won't find in random. So just note that there is a kind of a you know, cultural difference when it comes to running certain content in certain ways. Really never know you're who you're going to get random. They could, you could get some amazing players that've got great tips. You could get some kind of jerks that are just going to be jerks. And that's just, unfortunately, the online space that when you dive into any game, that's always a possibility. I feel like it's pretty rare here, but I've run into it myself from time to time. So at the end of the day, do your best, leave it on the field, learn the skills, and you're going to have a really good time with healing. So at the end of the day, I like I said, I love all these healers. If you're just getting started, there's no wrong choice, but maybe start with White Mage as it is, I think has offers perhaps the most and easiest way to kind of step into the role itself. Now, maybe then followed by Scholar and then Astrologian, but honestly, you can't go wrong with whatever you decide to pick. As long as you're having fun, I think you're going to love them as well. Now, if you find yourself with questions or things that just don't make sense, please send off in the comments and let me know what you're struggling with and I'll be here to help you out. And with that, we come to the conclusion of this video. Uh, guys, I wanna say thank you so much for watching this video. There's been a little bit of a different style as you probably can tell with this video specifically. And long before I reached out to, for some help, I've been following Wizfish's reviews and he is the editor behind today's, uh, today's guide. And I hope, I would love some feedback. I'd love to know your thoughts. More than anything else, if you like his style, especially when it comes to this guide, I think you're going to love his reviews. I've been a fan of his for a long time, and his link will be in the description uh, below. But beyond that, I want to know what you think about the edit, the style, the pacing, uh, any and all feedback as we're kind of just seeing that this is something that works for the two of us. I, again, I thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully I'll see you in my next one. But until then, take care.